Whoa, <laughs> is that so you can see me better? Hopefully you can hear me well. Any little helps, I guess? Um, <laughs> hi. So, when I was in my early 20s, I was madly in love with a boy. <laughs> it was my first time falling in love and I liked it. The only issue was that that boy wasn't in love with me. I mean, we were in a relationship, so I think in one point in time he liked me or was in love with me, but at some point decided that he just wasn't into me. He kept me around though. <laughs> he kept me around and because I was in love, I, I stuck around. You know this thing that they drill into your head in certain cultures that if you try hard enough, if you give it your all, if you work hard, you reap the rewards. If you fall down, get back up and try again. Well, I think that I took that advice way too literally because I did give it my all. I tried to make that relationship work. I gave it my all and I tried to make that boy loved me for seven years. In my naive romantic mind, I, I thought that one day he'd wake up and see everything that I'd done for him, how hard I'd worked, and he'd suddenly fall madly in love with me as well. Of course, that didn't happen. Um, <laughs> It didn't work out and I was left drained and void of any sense of self. But who cares about that because that's not the point of my story. The point of the story is, do you know what an abscon strap is? Here's how it was explained to me. So you're waiting for the bus. You've already waited 10 minutes and the bus that was supposed to come just has me. But you know there's another one in five minutes, so you keep waiting. Fifteen minutes pass and still no bus. You know that there are other ways to get to your destination, but now you've already waited twenty minutes, so a bus is surely about to come around that corner to pick you up. Thirty minutes. Eh. Maybe there are road works, or there's been an accident, and the three buses that should have come by now will all come around the corner at the same time. So you keep waiting. Before you know it, a whole hour has passed, waiting for that one bus. One hour invested, one hour lost. You could have just walked a few streets over and there would probably have been another bus or subway station or any other means to your destination, but because you had already invested so much time waiting for that one bus, you were going to make that investment worthwhile. You were going to get that investment back. And that's what an abscon strap is. An irrational situation where you invest something, time, for example, at a loss. And to make up for that loss, you invest more of that same something. So now you're stuck in a loop. You're stuck in the abscon strap. Does that sound familiar to anybody? Have you ever gambled away more money to make up for the amount you'd already lost? Or have you spent more time on something that you normally would have just because you already invested so much of it in the first place? Like for a bus? Or in a relationship? How about on a dream? Do you see where I'm going with this? Obviously, I'm talking to a camera right now. Instead of a, on a stage with a room full of imaginary people, but if there were actual people in front of me, this would be the aha moment, or what I would imagine to be the aha moment where confused faces would light up and would nod because they see, they see where I'm going. They see where I'm leading them. Ladies and gentlemen, please take a look at this beautiful abscon strap laid out uh, by our hopes and dreams of going to Japan circa 2020. Isn't it beautiful?
So is everything tying together now with my little stories about relationships and then buses and then how Japan is everything starting to make sense? So the board is closed and we all thought, eh, no way are they going to stay closed for very long. So we waited. A few months later, let's just revisit the idea of opening the borders in another few more months. And we'll consider it. We'll see. Mm. Okay. I guess I, I guess we'll keep waiting. I mean, we've already waited this long, so uh, what's a little more time? Why do you invested it? Flash for two years. <laughs> what have we invested? Time, money. A wide range of emotions. I mean, you know what? You know, you know what I should have done? I wish I would have written down everything that I've invested in this big move to Japan. That way, if I ever do get there, I'll just hand them my invoice. <laughs> Arrive at immigration. Okay, papers, yeah, sure. Visa, passport. Oh, uh, sir, here's my invoice for the two, past two years of my life that I'll never get back. Yeah, yeah, you see, like three plane tickets, but I've only used one. And oh yeah, those are all the doctor's visits uh, for uh, stress-related illnesses and anxiety. And oh yeah, all the job opportunities that I've had to decline. So that's a lot of money loss, you see. So um, hold that thought, because I digress. Flash forward two years to present time where I'm not having PTSD flashbacks of my past relationship where I didn't cut my losses. I stayed there way longer than I should have because of my try harder mentality. And now I'm laying in bed at night, unable to sleep, one side, what if that past relationship was a huge lesson that I should have learned and I'm not learning and I'm re-making all the same mistakes and all of this, all of this suffering would have been for nothing because I'm just doing it again. But on the other side, don't forget that I am deep and the abs strap. So I'm also thinking about everything I've invested and telling myself that if I quit now, my investment will have all been for nothing. I want to keep waiting. I don't want to keep waiting. I don't know what to do. I have insomnia. Oh, that's something else I can write in the invoice. Sir, insomnia for many days and weeks during these two years. Ugh. It is possible to get out of an abscond strap. I mean, see, I did it. <laughs> I got out, sure, at a loss, kind of broken, but I did it. I got out of that terrible, horrible, toxic relationship only to get in another terrible, horrible, toxic relationship with an entire country. <laughs> it's hilarious because I told myself that this would never happen to me again. I mean, I would never t let anyone take me for granted. I would, if I were to be re rejected in a relationship, I would be like, you know what? Your loss, no biggie, I would just walk away. The only thing is that I didn't expect that the next big relationship would be with Mr. Rising Sun himself. And just like any toxic relationship, they didn't communicate, they left me hanging, they took me for granted, they kept changing their minds, and uh, this is my, my favorite comparison. Um, <laughs> I'm sure it's happened to everyone here. Uh, you just ended a relationship. Doesn't matter who ended it. The relationship is ended, you grieved it, you're feeling better, you're moving on, you're ready to start dating again, you're feeling good about yourself. You meet a few people, there are a few potential matches that you think, you, you see it going somewhere. And bam. <laughs> that's when you get the DM, the how are you, the little message of that ex that they can just 
They can just smell it. They can just smell when you're about to be happy again. <laughs> Same thing happened to me. I was moving on from the Japan project of giving up. I had found this apartment in Brussels where I could really see myself in. And that's where Mr. Rising Sun slid into my DMs with, how are you doing? I'm considering things again. Okay, I'm totally exaggerating things with a DM. But that is what happened almost in the same week. Apartment lined up, considering. And it's not even a full, like, let's get back together. It's maybe, maybe, let's talk. Um, lots of vague details about the future. And I have like, this really sturdy plan on one side. Okay, sure, I can't really afford that apartment right now, but pretty soon, maybe I could. Who knows? But we've got Solid and Mr. Vague here. But it's Mr. Rising Sun. It's always the toxic ones. It's always... They're the, not the best ones, but they have something. They have something to really plant their hooks into you and keep you from moving, from running away. I wanted to move to Japan for so long. And then I've been waiting in standby, in limbo hell, for so long that I can't help but consider this. I got one foot out of that abscond strap and he's pulling me back. So yeah, that's where I am right now. Thank you for listening to my, uh, my love stories, my psychological turmoil. Right now I'm weighing my options, you know, a nice apartment which I can't afford in Belgium, Mr. Rising Sun. <laughs> he has treated me so badly, and yet I'm still considering giving him one last chance. And one real one last chance, by the way, because he's had a few. <laughs> so he thinks I'm bluffing right now when I say it. it's the last chance. I'm serious this time. Last chance. Okay, so we have a nice storm coming down right now. Tearing down my stage, so I think we're gonna end this here. <laughs> I'm curious to receive your love advice. Mm -hmm. Go back to the bad guy. Go to the new guy. <laughs> what a cruel country, playing with my heart like that. Um, but I gotta say, I do have a thing for bad boys. Boys have, and hopefully, won't always will so um i feel like i can't exit my stage either way uh, so uh, i'm just gonna go that way so <laughs> thank you for listening and uh tell me what to do <laughs>